Okay, Naughty fans, joining us here today, we have Pierre the Maven Medor with us. He's a Grammy-nominated producer and songwriter, for those who don't know. So I just want him to check in with you guys. Hey, Pierre. What up? What up? Okay, I just want you to introduce yourself in your own words. Well, my name is Pierre Medor, and I go by the Maven. Uh, and I've been in the business for 13 years, um, multiple Grammy nominations, multiple placements, and, uh, yeah, I'm just looking to, um, share a little information about myself today. Okay, so welcome, don't be afraid. We're going to get very in-depth with this interview, so guys, stay tuned. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start the questions off, okay? Now I've checked out your site. And I see you call yourself the Maven. Can you please explain to me exactly what that is or how did you come about that name? Well, the Maven is, um, well, the definition of the Maven is someone who is an expert at that craft who shares the knowledge that they have. So I think that the name that we to it was already something that I was doing um, on a day to day basis. I've been in the business for over 13 years, and I also get great pleasure out of mentoring um, other producers and songwriters. Okay, so where are you originally from? I'm originally from Connecticut. I lived in a town called Hampton, Connecticut. Okay, cool. Now, I see that you made the move from Miami to Atlanta. Um, exactly how did that come about, and how has it affected your career thus far? Well, I have I had 
caught in. And so I was kind of like, you know, what I'm just trying to hear him on the radio today, I'm going to say to myself, I will not want to be a presence in music uh, in that way. Uh, and that's one of the things in the way that he has, you know. So I think that's what I'm saying about 15. Okay, okay. So, what advice would you give um, a comedy producer, some writers, um, what to do and what not to do? Oh, that's a good one with me, though. That's a good one with me. But really, I would say, you can just study your craft, you know, study your craft. I mean, I mean that means, you know, get to know who was successful at it before you, um, before you, and um, understand their journey and, and what it took for them to get where they were, so that we have a better understanding of, you know, the journey that it made them for you. You know, no key journey that I like, but, you know, there are some similarities when you go back and look at other people, the way that they've come, and there's a certain indication of how you can go, you know, or the way you want the path you can take. I would say to me, you'll have come before you. Um, and then also, you know, the business, that's another um, side of it that is imperative because you tend to make money doing it, it's imperative that you understand how to make money in this business. Okay. Define your definition of success. I mean, I think success is um, having the ability to accomplish goals. You know, the only way to measure success is over a period of time. Um, where you can know where where you started at and where you are. And then to me the ultimate level of success is that once you accomplish or realize your potential that you help someone else uh, accomplish their potential. That's great. I like that. Um <laughs> Who is the person behind the music? Like, what shapes you, your artistry? Like, do you do anything outside of music that gives you inspiration or um, stuff of that nature? <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that shape me outside of music. Uh, I think it's a huge com component of who I am, but I think what even shapes that is uh, my spirituality, I would say. That's a uh, huge part. Um, you know, I grew up in church, and uh, my faith has always been the foundation of everything that I've been. Um, and, and I would also say, so I would say spirituality and family. Family is another thing that uh, shapes who I am. You know, kind of, to me, that's the crown jewel of life. I always say that. Um, you know, you treasure your family. Um, agree, agree. <laughs> I think that's one of the things that you need to make spirituality and family. Okay. So what are you currently working on? Uh, I'm currently working on a lot of things, actually. Uh, I have a newly formed entity called Maven Entertainment, um, where I'm, uh, I'm learning myself with certain writers and producers and building a company where we can fully furnish, you know, whatever an artist needs in the way of a song, um, and as well help them to put it out. Uh, I'm very interested in breaking new artists, so I, I believe a big part of that is having the facility to be able to create everything from the ground up, so we have resources and relationships and pulling them all together towards this uh, newly formed company called Maven Entertainment. And um, that's the primary thing I'm working on, alongside, you know, the usual everyday hustle of creating records to place on other artists. And uh, I've also got a couple of new artists that, um, that, I'm, that I'm working with and developing. So they should be ready to see some light in, in a very short period of time. Okay, so where do you see your company in the next? five years, the next 10 years, what is it that you hope to accomplish and you want the world to receive from your company? Uh, a couple of things. Uh, 
And then within the next five years, that means that my company will be a premier production company, a go-to production company for any and anyone um, looking to do music on a on a level where your music is not only relevant right now culturally, but also timeless, and that it can withstand you know the test of time. You know, and be around. Like making records that will be around ten years from now. Uh, ten years from now, I would have hoped that I had, would have duplicated myself, uh, or that the experience and knowledge that I have, and at least two or three other people, um, so that you know I have the opportunity to see them flourish as well. Okay. Okay. And uh, hopefully that is that mean that my company is running itself ultimately. That's what we all hope. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. Who would you most like to work with that you haven't already? Um, I've yet to work with. Um, I've yet to work with Beyonce, Chris Brown, or Rihanna. Those are the three. Those are my big three that I'd like to have an opportunity to create with. That sounds hot. <laughs> Beyonce, Rihanna, I think that would be everybody's top at this point. Um, that'll be a great look. Uh, I, think, I think that's too because I think, I think there's a, there's a, obviously there's a top that comes in the crib, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but to a uh, out right there who have influence, who have a platform, you know what I'm saying? These people have to tell me to actually create something um, that matters. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think a lot of times, artists are put in positions where they have to create things that are relevant or tricky. And I just think that there's a way we can, there's a, there's a compromise we can make to not only be, like I said, be relevant right now, but also be timeless. I think the other thing I'm accomplished that in the last album with some of the records that she put out. Yeah. You know, they felt a little bit retro, but again, not the the elements within those records they'll be around 10 years from now. You'll still be able to, somebody will still be before the label on top 10 years from now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because it's that type of record. You know, even though it doesn't sound exactly like, you know, a lot of the 808 heavy stuff that's on the radio now, not, nothing against that. I think there's even a way to incorporate that to where, you know, you can do it in 808, but there's still be some melody there. Yeah, some some substance. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so we're coming to the end of our interview. I just want to see if, you know, you want to have any last words, any last thoughts. I said we're coming to the end of the interview. Do you have any last words or any last thoughts that you would like to say to the naughty fans out there? I mean, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak with you. And, um, you know, if you get a chance, go check out my Twitter, at the Amador. And uh, as well, you can check out my website, um, MadorMusicGroup.com. Uh, all of my information is shared there. And uh, I've got video blogs up there as well as links to my music coming. And, uh, yeah, just stay tuned. Keep an eye out for me. And uh, I appreciate it again. No problem. We appreciate having you here. So, thank you so very much for taking time out of your day to speak with me. I wish you nothing but luck. I'm sure you don't need it because you're a very talented person. So, like I say, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. That's good.